Okay, welcome everyone to Knee Injury Prevention and Rehabilitation for Fitness Professionals. A lot of stuff to get through today. What I'm going to try and share with you is, is a pretty standard format that I've done over the last couple of years. We have about an hour or so at the start of the presentation on functional anatomy, a bit about injuries and common things that you guys will see and that we'll see. We'll then spend the last half of the presentation talking about specific rehabilitation programs, what exercises you probably should avoid in your weight training programs or exercise programs, what things you may do more of, and trying to put the whole rehab plan together if you like. So that's kind of our format. So the first half is functional anatomy physiology, second half is practical application of that knowledge. That's your lateral collateral ligament. Now unfortunately, again this as I can say is a right knee, late last year I did exactly a, a pretty severe injury to that and ruptured that lateral ligament. How do you think I'd tear a lateral ligament of the knee? What would I have to do to my foot, do you think, to rupture that ligament? A strong lateral move, movement or what a twist. Yeah, you think about which way it's going to stop. Is it going to stop the movement that way or that way? When's it tight? Yeah. When my foot goes towards the inside. So can you see if I'm planted on this on my right foot and someone hits me from that side, you see that could potentially stretch or tear that lateral ligament. I want to test his anterior cruciate ligament. I do what they call a Lockman test. So I get him in a bent knee position like this and I try and draw up his tibia. See it moves a little bit anyway? Its idea is what you feel when you, when you get to the end of it. You pull it up and it, and it locks or it, it jams. That means you've got an intact anterior cruciate ligament. If I pull it up and the thing just moved, so there's nothing stopping that, that anterior movement. Fundamental reason why I don't think they're a great exercise, and, and as a, those have heard me talk before, I argue with myself all the time because my bodybuilder in me, you know, I've been 10 years as a competitive bodybuilder, argues with my physio side. So if I'm, a, if I'm talking as a physio perspective, I think leg extensions are a lemon. As a bodybuilder, I think, gee, I've got to get some work through these quads, and that'll certainly do it and isolate it, and it'll be great. So it's kind of a risk to benefit ratio, and depends what hat I'm wearing. However, as a physio today, the problem with the leg extension, you've got a, I've got a contraction of my quads. We talked before about co-contraction with no contraction of my hamstrings. And that's, that's almost ne non-existent in real life. Okay. It's called a figure four position. Okay. And all I'm looking at is to see how well he's able to keep his pelvis reasonably level. If he's got a really tight internal rotators of his hip, he'd be up like that. We're lunging in, knee touches. Look at that, and we're measuring the distance from there to there. Now, we ideally want about 15 centimetres. You'd like to think you're about 15 centimetres. And it will vary, it's only a rough test. It'll vary with the height of the person and how long the tibias are. Tall people have a bit of an advantage. No, but it's a rough idea. And what I find even better to do is to compare right to left. Especially if you've had someone that's had an ankle fracture. Um, tight calves on one side, old calf tears. Compare right to left, because that may, may show an asymmetry down the track. It's called a lunge test. Now as he squats down, watch his lumbar spine. You can't see move around so you can see it. So there comes a time, keep going down, Manny. Keep going down, keep going down, keep going down. And come up again. Okay, there's a position in squatting called break. And break just means when you lose your lordotic curve. Now if Matt squats down again, have a look until where it is. Slowly, slowly, slowly. Stop. Okay, so he'd probably come up a touch from there. So that would be as low as I want him to squat. And it doesn't always correlate to what his knee angle is doing. You get a basketballer to do that, it might be a 45 degree knee angle. Okay, it's not about where the knee is as much as where the back is. So from there I'll do a small squat down and up. Now you can do it as a lunge, some people prefer to put it back and do a lunge, which makes it probably a little bit more functional. But again, if I'm trying to get a, a, a program together that's not going to stir someone up to get a bit of something happening here, this is an exercise I don't mind starting with or working into. It's a bit easier than doing a normal step up. And if you put a, um, a medicine ball between the knees and squeeze together, you've probably seen people do that. I'm now coordinating adductors. Now if I add my adduction in, or add adductors, adductors work nicely with my medialis. So if I turn my adductors on, my medialis will turn on better. So I'll be able to do that as a more functional, more, more intense exercise, if you like. A good training response. Bend, bend, bend. So I try and pull forward, pull forward, and then I try and pull him back. Does it feel any hamstring, Matt? Good. <laughs> and you'll feel, sometimes you'll get it. And a good one to do is if you do that and have another person there on a Swiss ball, if you're partner training, have you both on the ball, then you sort of argue about who goes where. So you're both on the ball as you do it, and one pulls the other one forward, and you coordinate, let me go, and I'll let you go, and you do that stuff. It's a really nice hamstring workout. And 
a little bit more closed chain because now you've got your foot stable and your body in motion. Thanks, man.